Vodafone in the year 2016 made a large number of network developments, actually potentially more network developments than any of the other networks individually did. And together with those improvements in network technologies and sort of network features, I've also seen a colossal increase in the performance that I've attained from the Vodafone network on my test routes to the extent actually where Vodafone has been repeatedly beating EE on some of said test routes, something that I never really expected to happen in the year 2016. So now if we go back to May, I saw and was, I, from what I can tell, the first to break the fact that Vodafone was doing some pretty nice spectrum refarming. So they weren't just refarming their 1800 megahertz from 2G to 4G like O2 is doing extensively. Vodafone also refarmed their 2100 megahertz from 3G to 4G as well. The 1800 megahertz, which was paired 5.8 megahertz, began appearing as a paired 5 megahertz LTE carrier. And I guess similarly at the time, um, 2100 megahertz, of which Vodafone owned paired 14.8 megahertz, 5 megahertz then began appearing as an LTE carrier. So that's L18 and L21. Now, this 4G2100 megahertz or L21 has increased on almost all sites from 5 megahertz carrier to a 10 megahertz paired carrier now leaving only 4.8 megahertz paired for 3G services on 2100 megahertz. There are a lot of areas now which carry 4G 2100 megahertz and together with the paired 10 megahertz of 4G 800 megahertz means that you get a 20 megahertz base layer on a very large number of sites now, which is, yeah, very nice. And I do see some very nice speeds on it. I've achieved over about 110 megabits per second on carrier aggregated um, L08 and L21, which was very impressive and has pr provided a massive uplift in areas as you would expect because it's doubling the capacity over the L08. Now, L18 isn't being deployed that widely at this point in time because adding L21 or potentially L26 to site is sort of more cost effective in terms of deployment because the L18 is only 5 megahertz paired. See, so adding L26 or L21 adds a lot more than 5 megahertz of capacity to that site. However, shortly after the sort of magic of seeing this 1800, 2100 megahertz 4G refarm, began to see even more of sort of the spectrum capacity development approach with higher order MIMO, where Vodafone was using 4x4 MIMO on a number of their sites. Now, as we've sort of seen in previous videos, high order MIMO is a very good thing to do because even for devices that don't sort of natively support 4x4, it improves performance on the cell edge, which disproportionately affects uh, the cell as a whole. So improving cell edge performance is very important and 4x4 is a very good way of doing that. But for devices that support 4x4, it greatly increases the throughput you can achieve because of having four antennas on both sides rather than just two. So the combined effects of the increased throughput for supported devices and then improved performance of cell edge customers, therefore improving the cell edge customer's performance as well as though the performance of the overall cell, make 4x4 a very good solution to deploy. However, obviously doubling the number of antennas does make them all significantly more complex to set up and deploy, and high order MIMO does have sort of certain other consequences sort of as a result of that. So 4x4 isn't, and high order MIMO is above that, are not going to be deployed on a macro level that widely, I don't think at this point but then they might well do, I'm not too sure. 
Now, Vodafone has been seen to be doing 4x4 MIMO on Band 7 and Band 1, as well as actually Band 20. Now, Band 7 and Band 1 doing 4x4 MIMO, you would very much expect, because devices, user equipment, mobile phones that support 4x4 MIMO is sort of coming to market very soon. In fact, there are some devices that already do support 4x4 MIMO on the high band, just because the higher bands have a higher frequency, so they have a smaller wavelength, and therefore it can be deployed into a handheld mobile phone. However, the 4x4 MIMO on band 20 is perhaps more of a surprise because there aren't handsets that support it and say from what I've sort of read there won't be mobile phones per se that certainly widely support it in the near future either just because integrating four antennas that can work well on that wavelength into a handheld mobile phone is something of a rather large challenge however mobile broadband devices which do consume a fair amount of data on a cellular network may well support it with the greater form factor that they can have. However, Vodafone hasn't just stopped at 4x4 MIMO. They've actually been trialling 8x8 MIMO together with Huawei. Um, now, I don't have too, many, too much in the way of details here, but that is on band 38, which is the Vodafone's TDD 2600 megahertz carrier and TDD spectrum is used quite widely in other countries for massive MIMO and higher order MIMO deployments and also small cell stuff. So Vodafone trialing 8x8 MIMO on TDD spectrum shows a good vision for the future in terms of network technologies because if they're doing 8x8 MIMO and TDD trials and things like that now it means that yeah potentially in the future we'll see a massive proliferation of sort of small cells and ultra dense solutions which some urban areas will most definitely benefit from. However the band 38 is also shows some sort of interesting features in the wild so a site in Manchester which seems to have become a bit of a sort of test site, uh, was doing 2x2 MIMO on band 38, but it was also doing TM8. Now, TM8 is sort of indicates beamforming, which is another technology which Vodafone has been trialling. And again, beamforming is a feature that some home routers market themselves as being able to do, but it's another way of distributing your available capacity to your users by using a sort of antenna panel with a lot of antennas in it so you can then use it to sort of split users into different beams and hence beam forming and again that just show a good vision for future network developments. On a broader country level I have seen Vodafone deploying TM4 on a number of their masts. Now typically you see TM2 and TM3, but TM4 is sort of a step above that. And it, I guess in simple terms, helps the mast to distribute capacity more efficiently to users and therefore provides more capacity over the cell area, which again helps sort of uplift the performance and provide more capacity out of the cell. So I guess it's time to move on to my predictions for this year, 2017, for Vodafone. Well, I think we're going to see L21 go nationwide and for pretty much every site that carries the U21 to get L21 basically because it provides a massive LTE uplift and certain areas do have LTE performance which more capacity would be a beneficial improvement and have seemingly quite a lot of spare sort of 2100 capacity in terms of 3G performance so shifting it over does make sense but while switching from 3G to 4G on a 2100 base station 
using a hardware switch, it's sort of more of a software one, that doesn't mean that you can just flick a switch and switch every site in the country over to 4G from 3G because obviously there's a very large amount of optimization and sort of configurational changes required to do it and that's why it has been sort of gradually being rolled out albeit very fast but still not sort of overnight and actually also moving the 2100 from 3G to 4G you still need the circuit switch calling capacity so that then means that on sites with 4G to 100 megahertz, they then have two 3G 900 carries instead of one and then that means rejigging the 900 megahertz spectrum around so it is very complex deploying the 2100 megahertz as 4G because of all those configurational and optimization changes that need to be made however like I say I think we will see it very sort of wide, widely spread because of the uplift it allows and actually I think we'll see band 7 2600 FCD 4G appear more widely as well because Lowe's uh, data usage is increasing pretty much exponentially so just adding more capacity to areas is what you would expect a, a well developed network to sort of be doing at this point in time so in terms of spectrum, Vodafone has a nice chunk of single downlink which is an unpaired piece of FTD spectrum at roughly 1400 MHz. Now Vodafone has a 20 MHz carrier of this and obviously 20 MHz carrier FTD 2x2 64 cram you're looking at about 150 megabits per second now, like I said, this is single downlink only, it's a single carrier of FDD. That means it can only be used for downlink or uplink, but as it's single downlink, clearly it's just for downlink. And therefore you need something to provide the uplink, and then that comes in terms of the primary carrier. Now, phone support for the 1400 SDL band is very thin on the ground, and even the ones that are available, the band combinations they support are quite limited. So at the moment, from what I've seen, it's basically just band 20, so 800 megahertz, and then the 1400 aggregated. But together, that means you've got 30 megahertz of downlink spectrum, which is capable of around about 230 megabits per second, with 10 megahertz on the uplink direction. So, but if that's deployed sort of on a wide scale, the 1400 that will again make an absolutely colossal improvement to downlink performance because I mean if you've got a site which is 0821 CA you're looking at 20 megahertz of downlink spectrum so then adding another 20 megahertz is a massive improvement and if you think of a fully spec site with 10 of band 20, 5 of band 3, 10 of band 1 and then 20 of the 1400 and then 20 of band 7 and then 20 of band 38 the capacity available is absolutely phenomenal although clearly not many areas will justify such a capacity rich deployment but nonetheless having lots of options available to a mobile network is a very good sign not only is the LTE data use increasing very rapidly it will soon have an additional load on it because EE and 3 have done Volte of doing Volte um, and I think O2 will do Volte in 2017 and likewise I think that Vodafone is going to release Volte in the year 2017 because I mean once again it it gets traffic off 3G onto 4G and also Volte calls are generally sort of better quality, they start faster, and I think actually looking at the statistics and um, reports, Volte calls have a lower drop call rate as well. So Volte calls are a good thing, although getting Volte to work is a very, very complex task because you've got to get your um, IP multimedia system, your IMS, absolutely nailed for it to work well. Although not only does having the IMS set up give you Volte, it also provides experiences like Wi-Fi calling and seamless handover. So if you go out of range of a Wi-Fi call, so you leave the Wi-Fi 
single area, then you can get seamlessly handed over to 4G and vice versa. So the fully featured IMS with Volti is something that we shall see in 2017, I very strongly suspect. So um, thanks for watching this little series about what the network operators did in the year 2016. I have quite enjoyed making it. It's quite nice to sort of highlight the achievements that they made, of which there were really quite a lot if we think about it, with all the sort of higher order MIMO new modulation schemes, beam forming trials, large scale refarming of a variety of different frequencies. It has been quite a busy year, but I think 2017 will be a similarly busy year with the two with O2 and Vodafone doing Volti, potentially three reconfiguring their Volti, more higher order MIMO and beam forming staff, additional densification strategies. So I think yeah, 2017 will be a year to watch as well. So thanks again.